my gosh. It's lovely, but surprisingly chilly. Night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. This is my last exciting Saturday night sitting alone with my little dog in the Point Lonesome Swamp. And it's not just my last Saturday night, guys. It is my very last night that I will spend uh, in the Point Lonesome Swamp. As far as I know, I might come back camping here for a few days every now and then, but uh, my time is done here. And uh, I am heading off to the great state of Texas tomorrow for about six weeks and then on up to New York. Probably be a few days lapse uh, between videos while I'm trying to figure out my springtime before heading into uh, the summer of 2022. And... Somehow, just for old time's sake, I guess is this the third winter in a row? Good Lord, this is the third year in a row I have been down here in the Point Lonesome Swamp uh, bringing you news of the collapse of global industrial civilization and the planet. And since I was so busy yesterday, uh, planet nibbling, my Friday ecological meltdown roundup rant just snuck right by me so we're going to close out our point lonesome swamp adventure with uh, Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com we have one more trip down uh, the uh, cavalcade of collapse while I'm planning my next adventure all right, on your mark, get set, go. Okay. I guess this is the fourth time I've had this story because the fourth round of UN talks to finalize a treaty talks fail to finalize a treaty to manage the high seas. UN member states met this month in New York to hash out a treaty governing the sustainable management of the high seas, resource-rich international waters that span about two-thirds of the ocean. Hopes were high after 10 years of discussion in three previous negotiating sessions that delegates to this meeting would finalize a legally binding treaty. And then talks ended March 18th with no deal amid a failure to reach consensus on several key points, including how to establish marine protected areas on the high seas. Yes, there we go for the fourth time. The UN uh, talks fall on their face. What a... Good Lord, there's a lot here. And even though it's Saturday, I'm just not going to have time for a hopium roundup. Uh, so we're not going to talk about using drones to save the planet. Uh, all right. Let's go back a year. 2021 Amazon deforestation map shows devastating impact of ranching and agriculture. Yes. Amazon Conservation's monitoring of the Andean Amazon project found that around 1.9 million hectares otherwise known as 4.8 million acres of the Amazon were lost last year, mostly in Brazil and Bolivia. Yes. Um, there you go. I, I love this. Uh, <laughs> uh, the data also provides some positive takeaways, such as Peru successfully cracking down on illegal mining. Oh yeah, 
Anyway, after that, the slapper. Uh, okay, we're gonna move over to Sumatra. You will not believe this headline. As I say, this is why I feel so blessed to have Rhett Butler and Manga Bay in my life because I never would have known this without Manga Bay. Have you ever heard of this before? Probe finds palm oil firm illegally clearing forest in Sumatran wildlife haven. An investigation by the Rainforest Action Network indicates that a palm oil company in Sumatra has been clearing forests there illegally since at least 2016. Yes, the extent of the clearing is nearly two and a half times the size of New York City's Central Park, making it the top deforester among companies that have oil palm concessions in Sumatra's Lesur ecosystem. Yes. The investigation found the company's logging acti act the logging activities and timber royalty payments are not registered in government databases. Uh, and its initial permit was granted under suspicious circumstances. Hmm. Yet, despite all these red flags, NYB Corporation has so far managed to evade government measures to crack down on licensing irregularities and environmental violations. Yes, what a shocking surprise. A palm oil company clearing rainforest in Sumatra. Okay. Let's just move over from Sumatra to Malaysian Borneo. NGOs alert the UN to a furtive, a furtive two million hectare that's otherwise known as five million acre, five million acre carbon deal in Malaysian Borneo. Yes. Civil society organizations have complained to the United Nations about an opaque natural capital agreement on the state of Sabah. Yes, the agreement signed behind closed doors last October. Blah, blah, blah. I anyway, guys, uh, this is... Um, I, I've been mentioning this story. This is just uh, the latest example of, of, of this absolute be all of this carbon trading and all of this crap. It's a bunch of greenwashing crap, uh, it, you know, ostensibly to give these giant multinational, multi billion dollar corporations a green light to go right on. Uh, doing what they do, which is eating a planet, and these little backroom deals with these corrupt politicians in these third world countries. It, it, it's a bunch of greenwashing bullshit. Rhett Butler knows it as well as Sancho Panza that, that any of these carbon trading schemes, it is carbon trading bullshit this red R-E-D-D -D program. It's bright green lies. It's unadulterated horseshit giving these planet eaters in league with these corrupt politicians uh, license to go on uh, destroying this planet, trying to convince these clueless little uh, greenies uh, that we're gonna save this planet by trading carbon. You know, come on. I've been reading this crap for 10 years in Manga Bay. It's time for Rhett Butler to get some you-know-what and, and get real. At least he's being uh, a little bit real in this article. 
Anyway, you know, here we go again after, after that. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Red, I didn't mean to go out there because once again, this is why I depend on Manga Bay. Again, I never would have figured this out without Manga Bay here. Did you realize, guys, now I want you to sit down and listen to this because you've probably never considered this. Did you know that Chinese investment, Chinese investment in Latin America plagues nature and people? Wow. A report from the Collective on Chinese Financing and Investments, Human Rights and the Environment, lays out the impact that Chinese-funded infrastructure, energy, and mining projects, can you say, the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, have had in Latin America. The report looked at 26 projects, but last count were there 7,000 Chinese Belt and Road Initiative projects. This is 26 of those 7,000 uh, in Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, Mexico, Peru, and Venezuela. It found almost all of them contributed to deforestation and water pollution, as well as human rights violations against local and indigenous communities. Yes, the report lays out numerous recommendations for improving the behavior of Chinese, corp Chinese companies carrying out projects in Latin America but expresses doubt about China's willingness to make a good faith attempt at improvements. Hmm. Who would have thought that China plagues nature and people? All right. Um, looking at fisheries crimes. Good Lord, a new study in the journal Science Advances analyzed roughly 8,000 fisheries offenses reported globally between 2000 and 2020. Yes, uh, database, the largest existing repository of reported fisheries offenses. The study shows that a small number of companies may be responsible for a large chunk of international industrial fisheries crimes. Yes. Uh, illegal fishing accounts for one-fourth the value of all landed seafood products, roughly $30 billion dollars globally, it contributes to the depletion of fish and other marine wildlife populations. This is the reason I do not eat seafood. That is my virtue signaling. I don't eat seafood. All right. As long as we're over there in the ocean, you know, you might have heard about these marine cold spells saving the planet. Well, guys, got some bad news. Marine cold spells, a potential buffer against warming seas, are fading away. A new study has found that marine cold spells have decreased in number and intensity since the 1980s due to climate change. Yes. Uh, while marine cold spells are decreasing, marine heat waves are increasing. Uh, here we go. Uh, if I was doing a, uh, a hopium uh, roundup, 
AI model shows how Amazon dams can be made less environmentally damaging. Yes. Researchers have developed a model using artificial intelligence to analyze the environmental impacts of 351 hydropower dam projects currently under evaluation in the Amazon Basin. Yes. The, uh, the AI has determined that no, otherwise meaning not one or zero. These are various definitions for no, not one or zero of the 351 dams could ever have zero impact across all the environmental criteria. Yes, and social impacts remain far too complex to model with AI. Yep, yep, yep. Do you think so? Okay, the stronghold for Africa's rarest falcon is threatened by Mozambique insurgency. Mm -hmm. This is the Taita Falcon in the Nyasa Special Reserve. Yep, 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 yep. The Nyasa Reserve is threatened by poaching and illegal mining, as well as a new threat from an armed insurgency. Imagine that, an armed insurgency in sub-Saharan Africa. D, D. Okay, let's check in with Brazil's Tapajos River, where a millennia of indigenous history faces erasure as mining grips Brazil's Tapajos. Yes, uh, the, the region has become the target of industrialized illegal mining, which is leaving massive destruction in its wake and threatening to erase tens of thousands of years of historical discoveries. Hydroelectric plants, ports, waterways, railways, and dams are all planned in the region. Can you say Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, which would directly impact indigenous communities? Yes. Uh. Good Lord, good. There's just so much stuff here, guys. I don't know. All right. We hear all about these forest fires, but how about savanna fires? Stamping out savanna fires does not bolster carbon sink by much, study finds. Stamping out fires in the African savanna generates smaller carbon sequestration gains than previously thought. Do you think so? Uh, anyway. Uh, all right. We're going to save the coral reefs by, it looks like the coral reefs growing in ships sunk in nuclear tests are doing pretty good. All right. <laughs> these these uh, sunk ships and nuclear testing host up to a third of coral species found on natural reefs in the area. Yes. Can these kinds of shipwrecks 
act as biodiversity havens for corals. <laughs> uh, Lord, anyway. Uh, all right, th this one is, is take with a grain of salt. Deforestation for palm oil falls in Southeast Asia. But is it a trend or a blip? I think it's a lie. I think it's a big fat lie. Some little weird statistical anomaly probably having something to do with the corona panic or something like that. If it's true at all, it is a blip is the answer to the question. Uh, probably because it's just uh, moving to other countries. Anyway. All right, I think we uh, heard Sandy and Jennifer squawking about this uh, a couple of nights ago. Multi-year ice, not the stuff that forms that we're talking, the multi-year ice, thinner than previously thought as Arctic sea ice reaches winter max. Arctic sea ice has reached its yearly maximum at about 15 million square kilometers, the 10th lowest on record. Um, the up and down story of sea ice extent highlights how unpredictable it can be from season to season. A study employing new satellites found that the Arctic's multi-year sea ice, the ice that survives the summer melt, is thinning even faster than previously thought and has lost a third of its volume in just two decades. We're talking volume, not the surface thin stuff that forms every winter. This comes as Antarctic sea ice extent hit a record summer low, raising questions whether it is beginning a long-term decline. While summer Arctic sea ice is predicted to mostly disappear by 2050, according to this, the blue, infamous Blue Ocean event, 2050, a new study suggests we could likely preserve it through 2100. Yes, by cutting emissions, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Here we go. Once again, Rhett is, is, is filling in a missing blank in my brain. I never would have known this. In Brazil, a forest community fights to remain on its traditional land. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, anyway, I don't know, I've never heard the word olution, O-L-U-T-I-O-N. I don't know if it's a typo where they were supposed to have the word solution. Anyway, donors must rethink Africa's flagging olution. Or do they mean revolution? A scathing new analysis of the Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa finds that the program is failing as its objective to increase food security on the continent, despite massive funding from Bill Gates. Yes, and the U.S., U.K., and Germany. As fertilizer and food prices spike with rising energy prices from the Russia-Ukraine war, 
African farmers and governments need the kind of resilient, low-cost alternatives. Yes, this uh, even Joe Biden. Uh, we had both Joe Biden and Tucker Carlson. Joe Biden and Tucker Carlson both chiming in about this new uh, food security crisis shaping up for later this year. As, uh, you know, all of the wheat and corn and barley and whatnot being locked up over there in Russia and Ukraine and China's wheat crop failing at the same time. When you have Manga Bay, Tucker Carlson, and Joe Biden agreeing on something, doesn't look good for those hungry folks. All right. Chemical recycling, green plastic solution, makes more pollution. The plastics industry claims that chemical recycling or advanced recycling technologies is uh, blah, 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 a, are a green alternative to mechanical recycling. But according to a new report, five out of the eight, five out of eight U.S. facilities assessed use chemical processes to produce combustible fuel, not new plastics. Uh, critics say the chemical recycling industry's incineration processes are polluting and generating greenhouse gases without alleviating virgin plastic demand. Yep, yep, yep. Do you think so? Uh, anyway, guys, I've got to move ahead. Here is a commentary titled Brazil's Ecosystem of Crime in the Amazon. Drawing on records between 2016 and 2021, the Igarapé Institute recently documented 369 federal police operations in the Amazon. Uh, researchers found that illicit activities from drug traffic, trafficking to illegal timber extraction often occur in tandem. Huh, do you think so? Uh, all right, long as we are deep in the Brazilian Amazon, you will be shocked to find we're finding pharmaceutical water pollution being detected deep in the Brazilian Amazon. Major rivers in the Amazon basin of Brazil are contaminated with a wide range of pharmaceuticals as well as with sewage and wastewater largely coming from urban centers in the region. Wow. Uh, they have found 40 pharmaceuticals out of 43 in concentrations that have the potential to affect 50 to 80% of a lo local aquatic species. <coughs> um, Experts explain. Okay, experts are explaining this. Let's go to the experts for the explanation that a major cause of freshwater contamination is the Amazon basin's rapidly growing population. Let's see, so you bring in a rapidly growing human population and you wonder why water pollution goes up. D, D, 
the, okay. Let's move over, checking in with Sri Lanka's elephants. Poor waste management turns dump sites into death traps for Sri Lanka's elephants. Across Sri Lanka, municipal waste is regularly discarded in open garbage dumps, many of which are located near protected areas and other wildlife habitat, drawing elephants there in search of food. The deaths of several foraging elephants has garnered global attention. Thanks to news reports tweeted out by Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes. Uh, the, uh, the former head of the Department of Wildlife Conservation says decisions on where to establish new dump sites often ignores wildlife concerns. Uh, yes, elephants choking on garbage. Wow, you have never heard this story before. This is a first for Mangabe. Indigenous communities in Ecuador struggle with the aftermath of yet another oil spill. In January, Ecuador's heavy crude oil pipeline ruptured, contaminating more than 20,000 square meters of the Cayamba Coca National Park. Yes. Three pipelines ruptured in the same area in April of 2020, spilling more than 15,000 barrels of the Coca River. <sighs> anyway, guys, uh, one more. All right, for the last story from Manga Bay ever from the Point Lonesome Swamp, we're going to wind up in Nepal. All right, from Nepal to wind up the final ecological meltdown roundup rant from the Point Lonesome Swamp, road project threatens to derail Nepal's conservation gains. A new study rates the risk that existing and planned roads pose to tigers, wolves, and other apex predators around the world. In the case of Nepal, the study also identifies sloth bears, wild dogs, and clouded leopards as among the animals most at risk. The new postal highway being built in the nation's south could impact eight major protected areas in Nepal and five protected areas in India. The threats posed by roads to wildlife include vehicle collisions, habitat fragmentation, and increased poaching pressure. But I'm sure that more and more of those roads are going to have electric cars driving down them. And those electric cars are going to be saving the planet. You know, those electric cars running over animals, those electric cars uh, fragmenting habitat, those electric cars uh, inviting poachers Anyway, it is not the car, it is the road. If there were no roads, there would be no cars. But we're not going to get off that rant. Anyway, guys, I'm heading to Texas at the crack of dawn tomorrow. And I'm going to wrap this up, finish my last margarita here in the collapse the Point Lonesome Swamp, and me and the little dog are heading to Texas. Don't know when you'll hear from me again. Uh, we are on the road again. 
on the road again. I will see you down the line. As always, get out there and enjoy it while you still can, and we all know why. Bye, guys. Okay, there we go. That was our last rat ever from the Point Lonesome Swamp. Say bye to the folks. Bye, folks.